Hello everyone, Joey Reyes here coming to you with another video and today I'm back again with AMD Ryzen 7. Now this is the new 2700X. As you, as you may have seen in a previous video which I'll link right up here, I recently went over from my 1700 which is last year's chip to the new 2700X. Now even though it's just last year's chip we see some really big advantages going over to the new chip mainly um, more overclock stability and higher overclocks I was able to get my old chip to 3.9 stable this one I was able to get the 4.1 stable and doing regular overclocks but what I did recently was I upgraded over to AS Rock's new X470 Tai Chi board and what this board allowed me to do is uh, it's got a little bit better power and it also has some new features um, that my other board didn't have so I got to play with this and I was overclocking it like normal but I recently found out about BLCK overclocking for this board and I wanted to show you something here I you know, if you can see right here I have some clocks here which are pretty high these are these are the max single core um, clocks that I've been seeing on this thing and this is when I have everything set to auto except if you see down here my bus clock is set to 104 instead of 100 which it comes stock now I'll show you my settings here which I have uh, in my app uh, now as you can see I have overclock mode set to manual it's 104 for the BCLK uh, this is on auto everything everything else is being controlled by the chip that's on auto I have my DDR set to 2933 but it, with the overclock it goes to 30 30 50 as you can see here everything is on auto all line load all V core everything is on auto and you can see here I have cool and quiet enabled still so all the energy saving features of the chip are still maintained and what I did do is I recently upgraded to EVGA's 280 CLC which is a 280 liquid cooler uh, with uh, it comes with two fans here one, two 140 fans I do have two other 120 millimeter fans so I have a pulse pull configuration so I keep my temperatures down which is really important for this test here and that's the reason why you see your, my cool attempts are at 18.8 degrees which is super low but obviously I'm not running any kind of program as you see here everything's there as you can see, like I said, single core and dual two core has gone all the way up to 4.5. Obviously, all cores aren't going up to this thing at once, but these are just the max things. Now, let me go over to Cinebench, and I'll show you what I'm actually overclocking to automatically on all cores. Check that out. 4.1 and plus on all cores, running super cool no problems and that matches my overclock the, my regular overclock that I was doing on this chip it's kind of insane that automatically just with a little bump to to BCLK and it's super stable by the way 104 runs stable on this system it might not run stable on every system but this you can see it really is kinda nuts that it will boost up to 4.1 let's run it again so I can show you again It'll boost up to 4.1, which was which was the overclock I had before, <laughs> and this way I have I can still on applications that need it will boost up to 4.5. This is the future of overclocking. I think I don't think overclockers will need to do this anymore because as long as you have something like this, as long as you can keep your device cold enough, you'll be able to get this kind of performance all cores and single core like in video games and stuff like that you'll be able to boost up and have no detriment it's like the best of both worlds now let's sh I'll show you I'll um, I'll render this video that I have and I'll show you the core clocks I'm getting out of this because I actually haven't run this test yet let's try outputting at 4k let's export see what happens Yep, still over 4.1, very easily, no issues whatsoever. Let me move this over here so we can move down here to see what our temperatures are at. Right, it's like I said, 46 degrees on the CPU, which is nice and cool, which is the reason why it's able to boost up 
to these numbers. And like I said, these are the single core numbers that it has seen, but that's like if, if the CPU can, and if it has the, the headroom and it has the voltage, it'll go up there and, and it's perfectly fine. Look at this, the voltages are not high at all. 1.3, no problem. Let me cancel that out. And this is this is really crazy because it's it works perfectly. I have no problems running um, any kind of PCIe devices. Uh, the, everything is stable. I've run memory tests. I've run CPU tests, and everything's been good. As you can see here, like I said, 4.5. It just boots it up to 4.5. But uh, I just wanted to give you this quick look um, at another option. If you don't want to over, if you don't want to do regular overclocking. These new chips will boost themselves very high, <laughs> just on their own. As long as you can keep the, the thing cool, that's the reason why uh, these AIOs are good, or if you have a really good liquid cooling setup. But like I said, if you have the board that supports it, you can also boost your bus, bus clock and get maybe a little more out of it. Depends on your stability, depends on your system. You, I've seen people getting stable 103, 104 all over the place, and you can kind of fool XFR to go to these high and iron things. And uh, like I said, the Tai Chi is great. Uh, the EVGA cooler is great. Um, I'm gonna list all my parts for this build in the description down below. But uh, hope you enjoyed this video. This has been Joey Riz. See you later.